Welcome back, wood lovers. Yeah. Welcome back to Tommy's Tomoids. Today we are looking at Entandra Fragma Cylindricum. That's right. Sapele. But not just any Sapele. Some really beautiful quilted Sapele from tropical uh, Africa, a very important uh, hardwood export of Africa. Uh, we use it a lot for things like plywood, veneer, uh, structural joinery, windows, doors, conservatory, framings, all this kind of thing. It is a very workable timber, very straight grained for the most part, unless we're looking at something like this. Uh, great rot resistance. It's a very, very useful timber. So it's quite often referred to as Sapele mahogany. It's not a true Sweetenia. It's not a true mahogany. It's part of the wider kind of umbrella family, the Meliaceae family, which uh, also encompasses things like uh, Spanish cedar, uh, kaya, which is African mahogany, um, but sapele is its own thing. So yeah, very useful timber and a great mahogany alternative. Um, I've used it a lot for things like necks um, and it's in this form, I find it to be extremely beautiful. This is what we would call quilting uh, or, pe or pommel figure, blistering. Um, it's beautiful. It makes it slightly um, unruly to work with because essentially when you've got figure like this, the grain is not running parallel uh, to the surface of the board. It's going up and down and up and down and up and down and you're getting that kind of wavy effect which produces this um, shimmery chatoyance that we see going on here. So in, in this format, you think, well, that has no, that has no place uh, as a tone wood, given that it's reasonably lightweight, um, it's not particularly hard. Uh, we're looking at 0.67 specific gravity, 1400 pounds force on the Janka scale. But surprisingly, Sapele is a great, and Sapele like this, Quilted Sapele is a really fantastic tone wood, which, which kind of doesn't make any sense. But I'll give you a little listen, um, because I was surprised to listen back to this. I hadn't tapped the Sapele for a little while. Um, so let's have a listen. So again, it's one of those woods that has a very rapid attack and then it decays, or the, the, the kind of tone decays away quickly. But if you listen carefully on your headphones, there's stuff going on, you know? It's not like the kind of cardboard that you would expect it to be, because I mean, look at it. You know, there's not very much structure there. Lots of internal friction, which is why it doesn't sustain. But it's doing something, you know? So with something like Quilted to Pele, I've made a, a couple of guitars with this in the past. This was a set, uh, uh, yet yeah, another set that I bought in, when I was in California doing my apprenticeship and starting my collection of Tonewoods, which subsequently cost me a fortune to send back in the mail. Um, so I bought this in, in California from, a, I believe, an eBay seller um, whose name escapes me, which is a shame because he's got some really fabulous stuff. So, you know, with something like this, with something like Sapele, wow, it's just shimmering at me. With something like Sapele, I would treat this differently um, to something like a straight grained rosewood. You can't, with woods like this, it's not ideal, it's not advisable to think about bracing them in the same way and thicknessing them in the same way that you would with, with a rosewood because the structure, the internal structure is just not there. So with something like this, I really think about um, voicing the back, you know, bracing the back in such a way to reintroduce some structure to allow this plate to, to move and to be an effective back, an effective vibrating membrane. So you could do all sorts of things. You know, you could ladder brace it if you wanted to. You'd have to ladder brace it um, quite substantially, I would say. Or if you didn't want to add loads of mass and you wanted more even, uniform stiffness, you could think about using a lattice brace. Or you could get really tech and think about composite um, structures, you know, using something like a Nomex in there, doing a doubled skin like you would get on a, on a classical guitar top. There's so many different things that you can do about this because when you've got a wood 
that's so wildly figured like this, you do have to treat it differently. Um, and one of the main appeals of using a piece of wood like this is just because it's so beautiful. You know, you're not going to pick a wood like this because of its necessarily because of its tap tone. I would choose a wood like this primarily because it looks amazing. Um, but it is, it does have something going on tonally. And that can really be coaxed out and enhanced with the appropriate bracing and voicing of the bracing. So carving material away from the bracing, selectively reducing the thickness of the, the, the top, sorry, the back, but treating it in a similar way as you would a soundboard to maximize the positive aspects of its tonal potential. So there you go. Let's get some magic spray on this. You might want to put your sunglasses on. I'm going to give you, I'm going to do both sides here um, because it's so special and so, so fantastic. I built a, um, a, um, a, an MMD that I was calling it at the time, which was essentially a, a Samoji studio model guitar during my apprenticeship from Quilted to Pele for a client who has, who had three of my guitars and it was, uh, it was a favorite of his. Look at this. Now that is jazzy. Hopefully you can pick that up and you're not getting too much glare off the, the lights I have here. Move that around so hopefully you can see what it's doing. Really, really awesome colors. We've got burnt orange in there. You've got the figure. You've also got some interlocking grain in Sapele, which means you get that ribbony, kind of stripey look to it. We've got some greens, we've got some straw golds. Really cool. So you got to know how to work with it. You got to be you got to be careful with it. It's a tricky one to bend on the sides, but it's cool. I really like it. I recently saw I think Murray Kuhn. I think he built a an, a steel string with a sapete quilted to pelle top recently. I'm gonna I'm gonna tag him in the video and, and maybe he can he can point me in the direction. Yeah, you wouldn't think to look at it or to hold it, but it's got it's got a sound. Yeah, big fan. I've got a guitar in order um, for Sapele next year, I think. I'm excited to build with it. So there you go. It's quality Sapele and Tendra Fragma Cylindricum. I think I'm saying that right. I really hope so. It's quite difficult. So until tomorrow, let me know in the comments what you would like. We've had some really good discussion. I've really been enjoying interacting with you guys in the comments. Um, so if you've got any thoughts on Sapele, if you have a Sapele guitar, let me know what you've got. Let me know what you like about it. Let me know what you're hearing. And uh, on that note, we'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.